Happy Easter. This is the week that was. I'm Julieta Televi. My co-host is Simon Brown. And joining us for some pre-weekend fun is Vestax Brat Kamalo. Brat, thanks for joining us. Oh, yes. Uh, good time on the markets, unless you're the Japanese yen when you're at record lows against <laughs> the dollar. Or cocoa futures, and we'll, we'll get those to those uh, okay, but then a, in a bit. NVIDIA dividends. Yeah, do you, are, are they, my, do you see my tweet? Are Tell they, us are about are they, are they your unhappiness you? on this. Yes, I understand. Maybe my math is wrong because all those zeros, my top, <laughs> 0 0.0018 percent dividend yield. Yes, and <laughs> it's so for every 1.5 million bucks, you get sixty dollars. That's how much in a year? <laughs> sixty dollars a quarter. Two hundred and forty. What are you gonna do with that? Like the admin of going through the, yeah someone said you must just like do a share buyback or something that's that's less more admin intensive just take one of their big fancy chips and throw it out the window for some minor exactly you know oh the quibbling going on <laughs> here um uh, according to the wall street journal 2019 is going to be the best quarter for the s p 500 since 2019. so this quarter mm. Or the first quarter of 2023, I mean, uh, 2024, sorry. We've, yeah, we've had some decent numbers. I mean, I was looking at the number, uh, at the shares or the companies that actually haven't done exceptionally well. For example, the one name that comes to mind is Nike. Yeah. Uh, Nike hasn't actually, you know, performed well. I thought maybe it's down about 30, 40%. It's down 11%, 11.6 to be exact. So, <laughs> so not catastrophic. But it's so it's, relative. There's nothing. Yeah, well, it's relative because everything else is down, is up about <coughs> from eight percent and above. So you do feel the pain. But I'm just putting things into perspective here. Whereas in 2022, everything was down about 30, 30, 40 percent. So, you know, draw your line in the sand, right? Well, Apple and Tesla down about 30 or 40 percent. So it's just Apple and Tesla. But Apple is down about 20 odd percent. Tesla, I don't know, man. BYD is on up and up. Mm. Mm. Build your dreams is apparently what it stands for. I only learned this that was this week. Yes, it apparently it means that. And I've seen it on their cars, but I, I thought maybe they're just making up their own acronym. That's actually what it means. They might be. <laughs> Anything's possible. Also making news this week, Boeing's CEO has deployed his parachute. The speaker and her wig aren't anywhere close to being arrested. Trump's truth social is worth a packet. Baltimore's bridge has crumbled and we are blaming your online spending habit. Zuma's MK wins round one against the ANC and cocoa beans are hot stuff, which is very bad news for your snacking habits. Yen's on the skids. There's more than a little weirdness in the IEC party list. And the one Texas man has taken the US election choice very personally. But first, the Hawks have us in their ghastly cold talons and there's no sign of rate relief anytime soon. The MPC decided to hold the repo rate unchanged at 8.25%. The decision was unanimous. At this level of rates, the policy stance is considered restrictive, consistent with the inflation outlook and the need to address elevated inflation expectations. The inflation and repo rate projections from the quarterly projection model Remain a broad policy guide. I'm disappointed. What can I say? Uh, but <clears throat> and and everyone was celebrating, saying it's expected, which is you know sort of a I don't know. The su worried. South Africans are suffering. Okay, actually, let me put it differently. The 1.1 million South Africans that actually contribute to 60 percent of the tax back tax um, kitty, you know. They're the ones that are the, the real ones that are actually suffering from all of this. And, and not just them, it's the companies that employ them that are suffering. And we are seeing it, as we've said, yeah, in the last few yes. months, in every set of financial yeah. statements coming out of corporates or listed <coughs> South Africa, you're seeing the impact of kind of relentlessly high interest rates on, on companies uh, gearing um, on their financials, uh, less money to shareholders, et cetera, et cetera. And it hasn't done anything to strengthen the RAND, if maybe that was the ultimate aim of this. And, yeah. and you wonder if we're not, if, if the Reserve Bank is just stuck in a, a bit of an ideological trap no, and, and can't no, actually see the wood for the trees. But inflation is going against us. I mean, expectations of 5.1% we're sitting at 5.6%. It's not good. It's also in the... Uh, le letter of the, you know, the target band or range or whatever you mm. want to call it. So it's not really, it's not like inflation is going backwards. And they can actually, you know, be reasonable and say, okay, we're going to lower interest rates by, you know, 50 basis points or something. I 
they also have their hands tied. But that's what worries me. And we made the point a few weeks ago that U.S. inflation has been stuck around three, three and a half since June. Our inflation, I mean, the risks are we've got oil sitting at 86 on Brent. We've got uh, we additional oil. oil. I mean, the, the maize crop's going to be 10% smaller. That we don't need to import, but it pushes maize. I mean, food inflation's coming back. So basically, what it sounds like is that South Africa is a net importer. Um, and everyone that sells to South Africa will only accept dollars because rents don't really mean much mm -hmm. anyway. So it's, it's becoming harder and harder being a South African in South Africa because the cost of goods are increasing while your salary is struggling to keep up. But the cost of goods are increasing partly because of administered prices, yes. which are a result of government failure. And we have argued this consistently, and that is reflected in the rand. And so um, you've got the Mexican peso, for example, at its best level against the dollar since 2015. That's an emerging market. So, so we are, um, our poor administration at government level is filtering through into inflation. Uh, it's filtering through into the rand, which compounds inflation. If you maybe gave a bit of interest rate relief, you might have a bit more economic growth and that equation might shift. Yeah, look, uh, South Africa definitely, I'm not going to defend South Africa and sit here and say we, we're all looking great and rosy <laughs> and our you know, administration is doing a great job. They're terrible at it. And I mean, uh, terrible. Uh, we need, we're going to need a new adjective for terrible. Um, it's, it's really bad in South Africa. The adjective is just South Africa. <laughs> Yes. The cinnamon, yeah. rather. Not that I want to <laughs> advocate any voodoo economics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, it's, it's not looking good for South Africans, and it, it would be helpful if we did have a government that actually cared about their people and actually did something positive for businesses to be able to operate in this environment and actually give them a chance to fight. Mm. Mm. It's a segue. Mm. <laughs> well, if you were hoping for an iota of accountability from the ANC, which continues to peddle the line that it will be tough on corruption, then the closing of ranks around the wigless wonder is an amazing feat of moral gymnastics, performed most beautifully by the biggest jellyfish of them all. The speaker herself has said that she's cooperating. And that in itself must say something to all of us, that we are dealing here with allegations that have been made, with a speaker who says she's cooperating, and from a governance point of view, she says, I'm going to take special leave, and the process must then unfold. It's already known that when it reaches a particular point, certain actions need to be taken. So there's no running away from that. So the matter is being handled. I know you Operating. use... Cooperating. I... I, 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 I Certain actions need Cert to be taken. The use what of action? the passive. What, what, no, what, what actions? Arrested. I wanted to say great use of words there when you said, you know, the jellyfish. But I mean, I know because you're saying he's got no spine, no brains whatsoever. But jellyfish actually quite, you know, they've got a bad sting. He doesn't even sting. We're going to need to find another animal. Well, she's apparently... Actually, he's an amoeba. Amoeba. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. been called before the Integrity Commission. Oh, the Integrity Commission. Cooperating. Mm. Since when do you cooperate with the police? They come and they arrest you. You don't cooperate. You don't cooperate. They, behind yes, your back they take you. dragged away. Exactly. You got put in a, in a holding cell. That's not cooperate. They just... They, they come to you. They tell you what rights you have. Like, you've got a right to... Yeah, employer, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And, and then off and you then go. And then off you go to holding cells. What's this special... <laughs> yeah, and it's Easter weekend, so it's Tuesday that you're in the holding cell, so cooperating, bugged up. It's <laughs> further afield, Boeing's CEO has been ejected, although mercifully not via a hole in the side of one of their planes. Criteria for the CEO, according to Emirates Chair Tim Clark, engineering. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> after the many years of this company being run by um, bean Accountants. counters like myself, <laughs> 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 you know, we learned a very expensive lesson there that you can't run a, you know, um, an engineering business using spreadsheets. And that's it. And, and I remember the name, McDonnell Douglas, because last hey, time we yes, couldn't. Yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's th when they did that, it was merger slash takeover thing. And the, the Boeing guys got pushed out and the bean counters came in. And their aim was to have a better share price than Airbus. Well, how's that working for you? Well, that, Badly. that worked out for the first 15 years, I think. And no. uh, the problem is you've got planes. It's important that planes stay in the sky. Mm. Mm. 
Well, we are here to add new things to your bulging bag of worries, and it is the price of cocoa beans. Futures for the chocolatey little treats topped $10,000 a ton for the first time in history, and if you don't think that's a lot, consider it's more than copper prices and almost double the last historical high of $5,400 a ton set in 1977. Yeah. Why, why were we not all long cocoa bean futures? How you didn't you tell them? us about this? How do you buy them? So actually you can. There's a, an ETC. If there's an ETF. Well, it's an ETC in the US, so it's not available on all platforms, but you can. You could if you really you want. You could. But it, this happens. I mean, cocoa comes from Ivory Coast, and it's not big farmers like, like we have in South Africa. It's small subsistence farmers. And periodically things go wrong because they don't have good equipment. I mean, it's the average person's got, I think it's a quarter of an acre or a quarter of a hectare. Wow. And then something happens, and there's, they haven't got insurance, they haven't got equipment equipment and so we've seen but not spikes like this i went and bought lots of easter eggs no i wanted <laughs> to, you know, i wanted to ask so I, I was reading you know separate articles from bloomberg wall street journal and all these other publications talking about alternatives to chocolate i don't know man there's just, no alternative just, alternative just to buy your chocolate there's no alternative it, do you see their faces there is just no <laughs> there's, there's no alternative there is for chocolate, chocolate and there is death what sort of language <laughs> are you talking about here so i don't know what americans know about alternatives the, the worrying thing though for all the the climate warriors among us is that it's uh, as a result of extremely high temperatures yes. so it's weather patterns that have also contributed to I, 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 I always like, um, you know, the, 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 the tree huggers, you know, the, the, the ones that are green in mind. Um, they don't think about the chocolates they consume themselves. Because, I mean, the, 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 the main issue is that demand far outstrips supply. Yes. Yes. That's why we are here in the first place. So had we not been consuming chocolate the way we have been in the past years, we'll all be fine. So maybe it's not just, you know... Global warming, I'm not denying global warming. No, but you're suggesting I eat less chocolate. All of us. Apparently all of so. us. Not you just before Easter, what you, kind of you a eat less chocolate. I, I, I don't eat much chocolates, actually, I to do. be fair. I was at Woolies today. They had specials. <laughs> I was buying chocolates. And it's election season, all right? And the IEC lists are out, including the names of 42 people on more than one party list, as well as that upstart that is everyone in KZN gnashing their teeth the MK party, not clear to go for it, or those Daily Mavericks Rebecca Davies wrote this week, there is no legal universe in which Zuma should be able to head the MK party's list on account of his criminal record, as the IEC has already confirmed, but now the commission has to grow some nuclear-sized ovaries to chuck him off the ballot. He can be on the list, he just can't be in Parliament. Yeah, I think what do you um, do once you've elected... But people step aside and, well, then you've got an oil. Are they going to, did you see them all dressed up in Maritzburg in their military fatigue? They yes. Or Durban. Was well, what's Durban the guy on YouTube with the beanie who, talk, who talks about South African politics? I like oh, that. Oh, that 5FM guy. Yeah, yeah, Dan yeah. Dan Corder. Yeah, yeah. With the yeah. double beanie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> double <laughs> beanie. Spare us. No, no, no. Triple beanie. I like what he said about, you know, Zuma, because he was standing there in front of a massive crowd in PMB, celebrating, you know, shouting and singing his song. And he says, wasn't this man that was, that was too sick yes. to be out there in jail and was fighting for his life? He says, you know what, contact his doctor. He must give us all that life-giving <laughs> pills that he gave this man because clearly they work. Because he's 82. Mm. Yep. Older well, than Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but certainly uh, fitter looking. After the break, new listings results in anybody else but Donald and Joe.